This is a short video for Writing Lab 3. In Writing Lab 3, we're working toward the final portfolio. Uh, the main piece that we're working on in Writing Lab 3 is the second part of the research project, which is writing a source critique. Uh, for this research project, the assignments here, I'll open it in a moment, we'll be using these review guidelines to review to review the essay as a draft, a full draft, a revision, and a final. And you really want review at each of those four stages. We'll be doing some of this review in class. Some of this review uh, will be happening online. So as a reminder, the research project is the project that you started with your group. And that project has two phases. First phase you've completed, which is preparing an annotated bibliography. Second phase is your own paper. It's a critique of two sources where you compare and contrast, you analyze their cases, the cases that they make, the arguments that they make, including their core concepts, right? Remember, we're focusing on concepts. But we also want to think about some of the same issues we did with writing the annotations. What's the author's expertise, as well as what's their case and why is it significant? So if I scroll down to the second phase in April, uh, in Writing Lab 3, you'll be preparing your own individual essay on a particular issue. So you're staying with the issue that your uh, group has researched. You're now in a good position. You've got a lot of materials on that. You're not writing a research paper. Instead, you're going to analyze and assess the relative credibility and authority of two sources from your group's research. <clears throat> so concepts there right off the bat, what does it mean to analyze? What does it mean to assess? What is credibility? What is authority? We need to talk about that. And we're looking at just two sources, although you can certainly reference as other ones. Uh, you want to explore the validity of their arguments. So how do we know their arguments are strong or good? How do we know they even relate to reality? We also want to explain the significance of key concepts for understanding the issues. And uh, I've posted something about working with concepts in the uh, discussion on concepts from reading and research. So you should take a look at that. That would be a good place to work to prepare for this. So you have some options. You could choose to compare and contrast two scholarly sources. So you could take two pieces of scholarship uh, by scientists or social scientists on your question and analyze them for uh, the authority of the authors, the credibility of their cases, the concepts that they work with, and the significance. Those four points are points you need to address in the essay. Right? We want to discuss the authority of the authors, the credibility and validity of the arguments that they each make, the concepts that they work with, and the significance of these arguments. Significance will be different depending on who you're working with. <clears throat> if you choose two scholarly sources, then you're going to be comparing scholars and thinking about how their scholarly arguments relate. But you could also contrast the cases of a primary source, a work of scholarship, and a secondary outlet or source, something from the media. Uh, and we'll go through some options for that today in class on uh, this first class in April. Uh, or you could look at the difference between a scholarly source and a non-scholarly piece, something that's uh, popular. You could choose to analyze distinctions within fields. So if you stay wholly within scholarship, what happens if you looked at social science versus science or biology versus chemistry on your question? You could look across time. You could look across different cultures. A lot of you have found articles from, from all around the world or some other difference that stands out to you. And we'll discuss how students in past semesters have approached this essay. And I've got some examples here that you may want to ask me about. I've talked a billion times about paramedics and coffee, um, but there are other options we could talk about as well that just give you examples. So key takeaway, the source critique is a paper of at least 10 pages. Uh, if that makes you panic, when you see APA format, you will see that the title page counts as a page. An abstract counts as a page. 
the parts of the paper which you can choose to divide into section are all pages and the references page. So if, if you want to look at this, you're writing a paper of seven or more pages to which you add a references page, an abstract where you sum up your case, and a title page. Those also count as pages. So we'll talk about that in class. Uh, and we need to set a schedule as well. The source critique will be due during the first week of May uh, I, as a key piece to the final portfolio. I think I've been saying May 1st, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, what are your questions about this project uh, and its phases? And if you find any typos or other errors in the document, consider that a bonus opportunity and inform me about that in class.